Assalamualaikum, I'm Farian Shaudin. I'm from Class JBA 114B and my student ID is 2020973393 and I will explain about history of post Malaysia. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Natasha Miti Hakim. My ID student is 2020957147. I'm from JBA 1114B. So, I would like to present about organization chart of the company and the conclusion of the report. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Muhammad Najmi Shah bin Najmuddin. Student number 2017247022 from JBA 1114B. Inshallah in this video, I will explain to all of you the transportation activities that help the development of nation economy. Hi, Assalamualaikum. My name is Ro Alia binti Muhammad Azdin and my ID student is 2020950719 and I am from class JBA 14B and today I will explain and cover about SWAT company of Post Malaysia Berhad. Hi, I'm Fariha. I will explain more about history of Post Malaysia. Post Malaysia Berhad can be traced back to the early 80s with the establishment of Porter Service First Industrial Settlement in Penang, Malacca and Singapore, expanding through the rest of the Malaya by the early 20th century. Other than that, Post Malaysia has survived around 200 years in the country economy industry. In 1992, Post Malaysia Berhad was corporatized from the PSD. Then, in September 2001, Post Malaysia Berhad was listed on the Kuala Lumpur Stock Exchange. It's known as Bursa Malaysia Berhad through a reverse takeover of Folio Allied Berhad, assuming its listing status. Today, Post Malaysia has many strategic ministry needs such as Post Laju, Post Data Post, Post Aranu, Post Digiset, Post Solution and Post Online. Do you know Post Malaysia is the one of the delivery service the oldest company in Southern Asia. Postal service have undergone tremendous evolution over the year, as their large branch network and operation that typically cover an entire country mean that the various other services could be offered. A Malayan Postal Union was established in 97 that instituted universal postage rate for the Federal Malayan State, the Strait Settlement and Johor. Kedah, Kelantan and Terengganu joined in 1999 when they transferred from Thai to British protection. Other than that, it was also start as a medium for the transmission of letters, newspaper and business document. The postal service soon evolved into a multiple services provider. It began to venture into a parcel delivery, registration, insurance service, transaction of money, Post of order, money order and investment of fund. Posting original copies of important document as follow but not limited to name D, my card, passport, marriage certificate, checkbook, road tax, academic certificate or other important documents are at the risk of the sender. Post Malaysia liability for any direct or indirect loss or cost resulting from loss or damage to such document is limited as set out in Article 15 of this term and condition of service. Alright, that's all for me. Now, I will pass the next presenter which is Natasa. Thank you for your help for the great information just now. Okay, I'm Natasa and I will cover by organization chart of Post Malaysia. Okay, the first one of the organization chart is CEO of Post Malaysia. CEO of Post Malaysia is Charles Brewer. Charles Brewer is to do what Malaysian CEOs could not to cool the postal service company's large workforce. So, as a post Malaysia continues on the journey to uh, to transform itself into a major player in the region and beyond, so Charles Brewer is the right candidate for the job as a CEO of Post Malaysia. Other than that, is Syed Faisal Alba. He is as a, a chairman of Post Malaysia. So, Datuk Sri Syed Faisal Alba Syed Ali Reza Alba as non-executive chairman replacing Datuk Yasmin Mahmud. Next is Ahmed Fairuz bin Abdul Aziz as an independent non-executive director. 
his to provide independent judgment. It will include outside experience and objectivity on all issues which come before the board, understanding detail, uh, knowledge of the company's business activities and ongoing performance, so they make informed decisions. So non-executive will uh, recognize the division between the board and management. Another position is still uh, independent on executive director, which is the person is Id- Idris bin Abdullah. So, as an independent and executive director is a member of the board of directors of a, a company or an organization but not a member of the executive management team. Other than that, the benefits of being an independent non executive director are they bring an objective viewpoint to the board. Uh, they are unlikely to have any family or majority. Uh, ownership ties to the business and they bring one of business knowledge and um, experience in many areas. So other than that is Jazli bin Muhammad Ramli which is a independent non-executive director. Therefore, non-executive director responsibilities include the monitoring of the executive directors and acting in the uh, interest of the company's stakeholders. Other than that, they in independently uh, assess the company's performance, ensuring the firm's stakeholders are considered before the needs and wants of the management or board. Subsequently, uh, Datuk Mohamed Sharil bin Mohamed Tarmizi as an independent non-executive director. He is low graduate and is formerly an advocate and solicitor. He was then um, invited to join MCMC as its chief operating officer in 2009. So, other than that, Ahmad Suami bin Endut, which is uh, as non independent, non executive director. Hence, non independent means a director who is not considered independent for the purpose of the listing rules. Next is Datuk Putih Rukiah binti Abdul Majid, which is her position is independent non executive director. A non executive director is a member of the board of directors of a, a company or organization, but not a member of the executive management team. However, they do have the same legal duties, responsibilities, and potential liabilities as as their uh, executive counterparts. And the last position in organization chart is Sharifa Sofia binti Said Mokhtar Shah. Uh, she is as a non-independent, non-executive director. A non-executive director does not work for the company in a full-time capacity. They do not uh, participate in managing the company and their job is not to run the company but to keep a close eye on the managers and executive directors. Okay, so that's all from me and I will pass to the next presenter which is Najmi. Thank you Natasha for an incredible input. Now, I Najmi will explain about the transportation activities that helps contribute to the development of Malaysian economy. Post Malaysia is undeniably the dominating mail delivery service provider in Malaysia. One cannot simply mention package and mail delivery without Post Malaysia crossing through their thoughts. Since its establishment in the 80s, Post Malaysia has been monopolizing the mail service industry since it is a state-owned company. They exclusively offer mail service throughout the entire country in West Malaysia and East Malaysia. As time went by, the needs for mail delivery decreases as emails and the internet become more common with society. But mail services are still used for official affairs in the country. Not only offering standard mail service, Post Malaysia also provides express courier services. This service was not handled directly by Post Malaysia. 
Instead, they set up a subsidiary post laju which is a post Malaysia subsidiary company that focus on express parcel delivery. Through post laju, many job opportunities and economics activities has been created as online business and e-commerce booming especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. Business owners who sell their goods online use Postlaju courier service as it is quick and reliable. This has made Postlaju as one of the overshadowing career companies in Malaysia. Post Malaysia also provide retailing services for their customers. For those that want to pay their utility bills, renew their driving license, or even subscribe to personal insurance, they can just go to the nearest Post Malaysia store near their location to do so. This service provided by Post Malaysia has helps locals that have difficulty to go to stores that provide those services due to their location that is far in between. It has made life easier for those people that do not have the luxury to waste time on the go if they want to get those services. The company Post Malaysia also offers international mail and parcel delivery services. Customers that love to shop online usually purchase goods from overseas. This makes the supplier or store that they buy goods from have to use Post Malaysia international delivery service because foreign delivery service cannot operate in Malaysia. When the goods arrive at Malaysian ports, Post Malaysia will be responsible for its delivery and perfect condition. At the same time, the international delivery will also lead to growth in our economy for every service other countries deal with post Malaysia. That's all from me. I will pass the baton to the next presenter, Nur Alia. Thank you Najmi for the great explanation that more to economics and I am Alia. I will cover about SWAT company of post Malaysia. Alright, let's proceed to the first one is Strengths of Post Malaysia is a powerful group of company in Malaysia. This is because they have a speed and digital trust with cloud CD and technology. CD and technology as uh, as known as content delivery networks. This is because it to provide a faster delivery of internet contents or more security for the company. The second one is a creative branding which is, is better manage a creative project increase in delivery item for the next uh, couple of years. Then they also have a start uh, work to further increase the company as a daily processing capacity to more than 500,000 items per day with development of a second IPC located in Kuala Lumpur International Airport or KLIA. They are also creative when offering by launching a new online insurance platform. Alright, finally, the last one of strength of Post Malaysia is the greatest facility and operation efficiency. This is because they give a better service quality for customer and comfortable facility. Then a group of companies also have an intensive career networking infrastructure with more than 1,500 primary channels of service. The very day include 99 brands, 39 kiosks and 162 agents spread across the country. Alright, the second main point SWAT is weakness of Post Malaysia which is moderate quality service and lack of communication skill or phone skill. Even though the Post Malaysia Bahad is a strong brand in the delivery service industry but the quality of service that the customer obtain is modest or just a normal renting. Alright, the net witnesses is customer also complain that Post Malaysia employee had opened the customer parcel and then they also did not receive the parcel. It also can lead the bad reputation of company and uh, can make customer lose their trust to Post Malaysia. Then the third one is they also have a late service from Post Laju, which is bad service provide is low in customer destination and this is made regular customer will turn to another delivery company such as GTEx, uh, JNT and so many more. Okay, the last one of the part of witnesses is higher charges of the parcel. This make customer feel it's not worth it pay a higher price for a low quality of service that has given. Okay, let's proceed. This is opportunity for company Post Malaysia. So the first one is they need to change in technology or make a few transactions be simple and possible to customer. Alright, the next opportunity is to do the collaborate with China. We grow its uh, transshipment business. It can make business expand easily and know in every Asia country. 
Alright, the last one of opportunity is to the collaborate with Data Sony in riding the fuel subsidy with lower the fuel cost. It also can save the money of worker when they send the parcel in many places. Okay, this is the last part of SWAT, uh, which is treated of post Malaysia, which is the higher number of competition or competitor from every delivery service. Just example, GDAC, GNT, Ninja Van, and many more. This is because the other company is a big competition for post Malaysia, so they need to stay alert and uh, attract the customer in a good way. The second one is a high threat of certification. This is because sometimes co-workers are uncertified with environment work or do not get a bonus of the salary because the company sometimes get more profit so it's not fair to them. Okay, the last point is the treated of rising unemployment rate and weak economy recovery, especially in this pandemic COVID-19. Post Malaysia is hard to prevent job issue and need to cut the salary of co-worker. This is so difficult situation because company need to handle for make sure employee get enough salary due this pandemic nowadays. Alright, that's all from me and I will pass to the next presenter is Natasha. Thank you. Thank you Alia for amazing input about SWOT of Post Malaysia. So again, I'm Natasha will cover last part which is a conclusion. So, the, con the conclusion is Post Malaysia Berhad can be said as the monopoly player in the national postal industry. So, Post Malaysia Berhad has been strategizing its operation to compete directly and indirectly with many companies in both the domestic and international arena. Other than that, Post Malaysia could be the best postal delivery service in Malaysia since they have a strong brand image compared to the uh, the other courier delivery service. Next, Post Malaysia had considered a few factors uh, before they conducted their procurement activity. And the lastly, Post Malaysia will continue to develop the strategies in order to uh, to maintain the competitive advantage against their suppliers. So that's all from us about company of Post Malaysia. Wabilai Taufiq wal Hidayah. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you.